I'm no historian, but I believe beam engines were in their heyday about 1850, 1860, something like that. Uh, although their lifespan was much, much longer. They were used in many industrial applications, uh, pumping, drainage, surface water drainage, uh, clean water applications sometimes, gas works and the like. This video shows a few clips of my attempt to build one from a third hand set of uh, Stuart Turner castings um, which proved not to be without some odd difficulties which I'll refer to later on. Initially I thought the castings for the beam engine were a better quality than the Stuart Victoria engine that I previously built. But as time went on I came to realise that that maybe wasn't the case. This is the second of the two Stuart casting sets that I bought second hand. This one is for their um, beam engine and I have to say in general these castings are of a much higher quality than the ones for the uh, horizontal single cylinder engine that I built. By the look of them uh, a lot of these castings actually are uh, by the lost wax process which gives a much better much better finish. I did take the opportunity when I was doing that horizontal engine, I machined the cylinder for this beam engine because the cylinders are identical and while I had the setup going I just decided to do that to save myself a job later on, save setting up again, so that's fine. Like I said, second hand didn't come with the drawings, this one unfortunately, and you can buy them from Stuart. Uh, but I haven't done so because I'm kind of hoping um, I might be able to uh, manage to get the dimensions out of this little book Building the Stuart Beam Engine by Andrew Smith But we'll see how we get on And if I can't figure it out from this because they're very small Then I'll have to spend another whatever And buy some drawings from Stuart so I can't work it out for myself but we'll see how we get on with that. Having machined the top face and the bottom face of the pedestal, I've blued out the various places where things are supposed to attach. And I've very carefully marked out centre lines um, to show where the various components go and I've also done a similar thing centre lines on the base of the pedestal these two are now attached and the centre lines of the uh, of where the beam is going to go etc and also centre lines on the base of the uh, of the cylinder that's now attached as well so the plan, not much of a plan, if I align all these marks I uh, everything should end up sort of looking uh, something like parallel and whatnot. It's interesting that the dimensions on the beam which is seven inches but it's not identical one, one half is three and a half inches and the other end is uh, Onto the drawing, three and seven sixteenths, a sixteenth less. Um, I assume, and I don't know, that in some fashion, mechanically, it wouldn't matter in this model. This uh, difference in sort of where the beam holes are would account for the increased mass at one end of the various uh, bits of parallel motion. That would be more typical of a prototype the mass is so small in this thing I can't think it makes any difference what you do but anyway never mind I've stuck to the drawing notwithstanding previous comment read the castings the more astute viewers will instantly have spotted which I didn't that the casting set did not include the beam so I had to buy a beam from Stuart's and while I was doing that I decided to buy a full set of drawings 
because actually I just couldn't work from the uh, the small Andrew Smith book. Notwithstanding previous comment as well about the quality of castings, the cast iron flywheel was so chilled in one spot it was diamond hard and I absolutely could not machine it. And the only way I got around that eventually was by setting up a grinding wheel and actually grinding the flywheel to finished dimension. I've not seen this before and I don't much care for the look of it. There is a circular, well, I presume is some sort of shrinkage crack around this imperfection in the uh, rim of the flywheel. Uh, it must be inch and a half long and it's kind of uh, opening out that way. That's probably slightly better. I do not like the look of this at all. Oh dear. I know that Stuarts have a first class reputation for exchanging, replacing defective castings. But as I didn't buy this set from direct from Stuarts, I didn't feel that I could really uh, prevail upon them to replace the flywheel. In the short term, therefore, I've decided to carry on using the slightly defective flywheel. And this is a short clip showing the first trial fit of things and turning things around with my hand drill just to see that um, fits and things are something like. I do have a copy of the book on building this beam engine by Andrew Smith and in that there is a reference to making this these um, the motion work and the link rods out of flat stock chucking each one in the four jaw chuck to then turn them to a sort of fish bellied profile and then finishing the ends off with a file I don't believe he ever did that. I really don't. I think that was a theoretical uh, discourse. I can't believe that anyone would go about this job in that fashion. Chances of success I think would be low and the work involved astronomical. Don't really know what to call, call these parts actually but there you are then. One or two of them need trimming more accurately to length but 16 bearing ends or something for the uh, eight shorter link rods which I've yet to make drilled an eighth of an inch and uh, cross drilled and tapped 10 BA to take the rods that I've yet to make I think that's enough boredom from one day I'm going to go find something else to do have a bash at the rods tomorrow First of April 2021, the appropriately named April Fool's Day. I'm still working on this Stuart Beam engine and yesterday did a trial assembly of, I don't know what you call it, but the link motion. And yeah, it works, seems to. It ain't right. And what is wrong to my eye is that this pivot across the back is at an angle, slight angle, to this cross head or something. And I can't leave it like that. Now when I started to make this thing, I thought I'd be clever. To make these links out of 1 8 thick flat bar stock, easiest job in the world. And no, I decided not to do that. I decided that I would have a slightly fish bellied shape to round rod links um, with pivots attached to each end. 
And what I did, I made them in two batches of four. Um, so in theory, two batches of four, and each batch of four should be precisely the same. The only slight issue is when I was assembling the thing, I wasn't paying much attention, mixed everything up. And what I think I've done, and hopefully that's the solution, but we'll find out. What I think I've done is, is muddled up the batches of four, um, which has resulted in me using links at the back of, it's only a few thousands, uh, of unequal length. So what I've got to do is take this lot apart and try and figure out whether that is the problem, and if so, which rods go with which rods. Uh, all the washers and so on and so forth, that's all just temporary if you can see them. They're just temporary for the moment for the purposes of a temporary erection. I haven't made the collars yet. Excuse the noise of the washing machine in the background. Right, I've uh, corrected the lengths of the... Um, I don't know how you describe them, misformed links where I hadn't got the... the I'm identical and uh, things are now moving more to my satisfaction so that's good and even more important this cross rod at the back is parallel to the cross head and everything else so I've sorted it all out it's only taken all morning but anyway I've now got to uh, make various spaces and probably remake one or two of the uh, pins to uh, accommodate the locks. I think, um, I'm not sure whether I've got these two rods quite right. I mean, at the moment they don't have any pins, that's just a nut and bolt in there. But yeah, good job. I thought this was a beginner's engine, but I have to say this linkage has proved uh, Troublesome to say the very least. Still, job's done. To enhance both the appearance and hope, hopefully the running of the model, I decided to make a um, centrifugal geared drive governor. I've got a centrifugal governor made some of the bolts do changing for permanent ones they're not right just yet and i've constructed a pedestal for the governor to sit on just losing me drill to turn matters around and it kind of runs okay But I would be happier, I mean this structure is pretty rigid, but I would be happier if that was more rigid in the, uh, in the lateral direction. And then of course what I've got to do is to uh, work out a lever arrangement to transmit the uh, governor movement. This is not pinned at the top yet. The governor movement down to the uh, butterfly valve at the other end. So we'll need a rod and a fulcrum of some description into this, uh, I don't know what you call it really, bearing or something. Recess anyway. So that this up and down movement translates to uh, to the governor to open and close the butterfly valve. Not completely sure how to do that at the moment, what that's going to look like still. So this is the completed governor mechanism for the beam engine. 
prior to uh, putting a bit of paint on it. snap of the baseboard showing the various drillings to fix the engine and its bits and pieces down. Alright, I'm about done with this beam engine for the time being at least. I'm going to call it finished. Um, it isn't really. I haven't got around to painting the uh, verticals on the bit of fence but I have to be honest, I've really, really struggled for enthusiasm for it with this. I didn't intend to buy this casting set, it just happened to be there. Uh, I've had a few troubles with it and I've never, never really had the enthusiasm for it. But anyway, we ground our way through it. Okay. The last run of the beam engine on air before it goes on the shelf. It'll slow down as the uh, tiny compressor fails to keep up with uh, what's required. We can probably just about make out that the, uh, the governor does actually work. I haven't slowed the engine down very much, not on air anyway, but uh, there we go. It's a really tiny noiseless compressor and it don't really cope. Now I'm going to put the beam engine on the shelf. I've um, uh, got a couple of other projects I need to get finished. One is a another carriage to tow behind one of my steam trams uh, and I'll do a short video on that when I get that sorted out and then the other thing I've got to finish I've got to get back to this I've not got any three cylinder engines and for some reason I decided I would make one this is not to any published design at all just thought I'd do it and I got to a certain point with it and because I'm just making it up as I go along I uh, Run out of steam, sorry about the pun. At the point where I've got to make some conjugated gear to to work the middle cylinder. So I'll get that done and at least get the thing to the point that it'll run on air, the chassis, whether I make a boiler for it, I don't know yet. I'm getting a bit old for this lark. So uh, I'll do a video on it when I, assuming I get it to run, I'll do another video on it, but that's a little way off yet. Thank you very much for watching. <clears throat> Don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this uh, even vaguely interesting as it does help me uh, with a bit of motivation to uh, make more videos. Many thanks.